Nathan. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's so nice to, to meet you because we've been trying to meet up quite a few times over the last year and either I've been ill or something's happened. So it's so nice to actually put a face to name. <laughs> <laughs> we got there finally, albeit not in the situation we'd like, but hey, Zoom's better than nothing. Absolutely. Speaking of, how, how has your lockdown been? Uh, yeah, it's been okay. I was speaking to someone this morning about this, actually. I think from a business perspective, we've been very fortunate. We've uh, The team have kind of dug in. And as I say to everyone, it's about getting in the trenches, right, when the times are tough. And, and we've been really fortunate in that sense, from a business sense. From a personal sense, I mean, if I'm really honest, it's been quite tough. Mm. I think it's been uh, the first few weeks were quite exciting and obviously massively scary, but quite exciting. Then the next few weeks after that, uh, I might kind of break it into chunks. The next few weeks after that were, there was still a bit of novelty around it. It's like, oh, this is so cool. We're not doing something every single night. I've got time to watch films. It's really nice. And then it was kind of like the next two weeks were, okay, the, it's getting a bit boring now. I'd love to see some friends. I'd love to go and eat out for dinner. I'd love to do this or that. And then we got into the last two weeks where actually motivation's really taken a hit. Right? It's hard to keep being the face of things and keep being smiley and happy. And actually, it's sometimes really tough. And... Yeah, leads are, are still coming in, which is great. We're incredibly fortunate from that sense. But the process to go through to acquire those leads is, is tough. Is a, the sales cycle is probably times by three, maybe. Okay. So actually, so the work think, we're having to put in is massive. Yeah, so if you think normally we say seven touch points, don't we? So if that's three, that's, that's yeah, a Yeah, possibly 20, 21 touch points. Or certainly yeah. what I'd say is we, our close time is normally about 22 to 23 days from lead coming in to lead closing. Now, actually, if all of a sudden that's at 66 days on average, you're just thinking, okay, well, how does that affect cash flow? How does that affect morale? I'm a big one. It doesn't matter what size of project you are. If you win, you win, right? And I love really competitive. And so there's no greater buzz you get from winning something. But if you're having to wait, and the, the, the win process becomes quite addictive. And if you're having to wait for 66 days to get that buzz, then that can be quite hard. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm on you, I'm with you with the stages. Um, I think for me, it's been, what's been a bit more difficult for me is all the external, so the the media, the news, the cycles, um, and, and at the moment, everything being quite, contra like, everything's controversial, and you're just like, ah, <laughs> just be nice, please. There seems to be no rest, right? We just think, uh, I was saying this to someone the other day, I said that, there was that obviously terrible episode with Caroline Flack and everyone was mm -hmm. like, oh, you know what? This is it. New Leaf. We're going to be really nice. We're going to support each other. And then Dominic Cummins goes to do whatever he did to see his family or whatever and the media are all hating him and now there's the, the Black Lives Matters thing. And you just think, oh, come on. Like, can we not just for 10 minutes just play nicely in the sand all together and not have this everyone kicking off? But hey, at the end of the day, you've got to control the controllables, right? And all that stuff's out of our control. So we've just yeah. got to keep smiling. Absolutely. And, and I think, I hope things will come around again where we'll have a bit more patience with each other. Um, and so uh, my um, coping mechanism has been going on media blackouts. So okay. I, my other half keeps me up to date with what I need to know. And then I go and find my own resources. So for, for example, with Black Lives Matters, I've chosen to listen to some audible books and actually learn about what's happening um because the shouting was just getting too much and it was starting to make me feel quite edgy so i felt yeah. right i need to learn about what's happening and then find a way that i can actually do something about it instead of just going oh how can you say this and, oh. <laughs> yeah. wouldn't that be so nice if the world operated on that mantra where before you jump into an opinion you just educate yourself first and then you have an informed opinion as opposed to a like a herd opinion in terms of oh my mate told me this therefore that's what i believe in yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we've talked about lockdown and your business, but we haven't actually covered the really important part of, Nathan, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, co-founded an agency called Quickfire Digital. We're an e-commerce focused digital transformation agency. So in real simple English, that's essentially a design and build of websites. It goes on to things like API integration and custom uh, kind of web apps and stuff like that. But actually the bread and butter for us is WordPress and Shopify development. Okay, so selling online. Yeah, exactly. So again, any business that sells online, they're the kind of businesses we like to work with. Now, interestingly, there's a gap between marketing and sales, right? Because you talk about oh, how we actually sell e-com products, but then somebody comes to us and wants a website for an insurance firm or a bank or whatever, and we'd still 
absolutely look after them and do that. But yeah, our, our team and myself and Tia, I love working with econ brands. And I, I believe that the results can be more tangible. You can actually measure ROI so much easier. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm, all, I'm all up for that kind of traceability. Yeah, that's amazing. So I'm just wondering, because of COVID, does that mean you've suddenly got a load new, a new yeah. type of customer? A type of customer that might not be very familiar with e-commerce and going, oh my God, I need to pivot help. Yeah, so there's a real strain, a real mixture, I guess. The first would be people that realise that their proposition that was um, online before lockdown, actually a lot of people have relied too heavily on bricks and mortar, particularly in the luxury space. So it's actually, oh yeah, we've got a site because we have to have a site. And actually people come to us anyway um, through the door and we sell to them in the shop and we rely on great customer experience and everything else. And that's brilliant. But actually COVID has been a bit of a kick up the bum to be like, no, you know what you do need an online pro- proposition this is probably one of the first times someone will interact with your brand and actually you can do a lot of the heavy lifting online anyway so that's been one type of customer the other is that they're looking to probably they've been given some time they didn't expect to have so they're starting to look at their e-com site and say you know what this probably isn't where we want the business to go and actually over the next 12 to 18 months we're gonna have to make some significant changes the website being one of them mm-hmm. so that's another customer and the third is actually a really interesting type which is those new people new entrants to the market where they're going with adversity comes opportunity let's set up an econ play and let's see if we can capitalize on this and that's really interesting because you've got to have a hell of a growth mindset and a hell of a positive mindset to be able to set something up in a in a situation like this but those that do seem to be thriving so that's brilliant well no absolutely and i think from a consumer's perspective um I'm always quite disappointed to see how luxury brands that have great customer service in store have abysmal online experiences where you just give up with the website and you go, so um, no, that's, that's really interesting. Um, so we, at this point in the call, we we take a bit of a different direction and (laughs) (laughs) so over the last few month i guess they've been talking about the bookshelf on tv so i wanted to know what's on your bookshelf as in what type of uh, literature podcasts audible um is on your radar shaped you what you've been doing at the moment um just your type of recommendations so my bookshelf is all like this part just out of shot if i um if i just quickly put my empty glasses on the floor I can maybe show you. So these are all the books purchased just in lockdown. Wow. Okay, so I think there's 61 books now that have purchased through lockdown. And so where to begin? Uh, this book changed our agency. It's called Agency Nomics. If you hear me talking on podcasts and shows and stuff, I'm always referencing this book. Really great book. All around growing and scaling an agency. Um, I'm reading a great one at the moment called Daniel Priestley's Key Price of Influence. That's always good. Um, there is a brilliant. Oh, snap. <laughs> Love that. Snap, snap. <laughs> Not a time for that. There's a brilliant book here called What Got You Here Won't Get You There by Marshall Goldsmith. And that's really interesting because we're having times of business to reflect and say, okay, we're fast approaching our first milestone of seven figures. That's great. But actually, we don't just want to stop there. We wanted the business to keep growing. And actually, some of the habits and behaviors we have as a leadership team, we probably need to adjust and change. And actually, rather than looking outwardly and pointing blame at you need to change that, you need to change that. It's more like, okay, what do I as an individual need to change? And how can I become a better leader to make sure that we can thrive into the next kind of chapter of our journey? And so that's been a really interesting book. Uh, There's a great book I've read here called Traction. So they talk about rocks and I've always, um, I I love that kind of concept. And actually a lot of the books, a lot of the concepts in some of these other books are kind of taken from Tractions. So Tractions, well worth a read. And finally, I have to pick one more. What did I read last week? Good question. I think it would be, where is that book on? Somewhere. I had a book on uh, 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 the tipping point. Here it is. Malcolm Gladwell. Looks like a bit of a matchstick, that one there. Oh, yes, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, Yeah, so it's really interesting. It's all about kind of marginal gains and how little things can make big differences. 
Mm. And it actually talks about pandemics, which is um, a little bit close to the mark at the moment. But hey, it's um, yeah, it's quite an interesting read, and I've I'd heard good things. I've enjoyed reading it. So yeah, they're probably my top five. I do have most of those on Audible as well. But I must say, it all depends on the author whether I can get into it or not in terms of the the person speaking. And I actually find that I can't multitask, which may come as a massive surprise. Um, but actually, no, I have to do a, one thing at a time. And reading allows me that escape, but I never have the time. And Audible, I try to listen to, and I probably get one in every 20 words. Oh, there's one more, The Art of Negotiation. I've okay. been reading that. That's been brilliant. It's all about this guy in the SAS, and that's my kind of book. Amazing. Well, um, I, I, I know what you mean with the Audible. I've had to change what I listen to on Audible. So um, if it's something to do with history or a bit more gener generic educational, I can listen to it and have to do the washing up and cleaning the house at the same time. But if it's <laughs> proper, proper self-development and you actually want to, you know, roll your sleeves up and, and really get into it, then I do have to read it. So that's been a change in my sort of behaviour with it. Is there one particular book you recommend? Um, well, I'm currently on a key person of influence, but yeah. my recommendation at the moment is got me into reading is The Slight Edge. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which um, I only read at the beginning of lockdown. So before, before lockdown, Barbara didn't read. I read like <laughs> but not read read um mostly yeah. because i thought i couldn't read okay so um so yeah well english being my second language um i just yeah. always assumed oh i'm really slow and it's not very enjoyable but i sort of forgot that i've been here now for 10 years and i've actually become quite good at english language where's your first where's your first language um german i would literally have never known that yeah i, I hide it really well and people don't really um Unbelievable! I, I never knew that. That was like you speak like as if you've lived around here all your life. No, no, I, I came over in two thousand and seven. Um, I'll tell you uh, when you can hear it. It's when I get a bit pissed and suddenly the German <laughs> accent comes up again. Yeah, and and also sometimes I use weird words. Oh, I make up words. Okay. Um, and my mates are, they call it barbarisms, and I go, oh, Barbara, it's not quite right, and it's always rude. <laughs> <laughs> Love so, that. Um, yeah um, um just wanted to mention podcasts because you yeah. yourself are a podcast and vlogger so um yeah. just to give you the opportunity to plug your own channel oh god this is unbelievable so we've got a couple of uh, podcasts that are running well got addicted to business which is our podcast that goes out every week and then we've got another kind of webinar series called Engage with E-commerce. So Addicted to Business is with Stokely Howard from Trendy Grandad. And we talk all things business and business growth and stuff like that. And Engage with E-commerce is with a lady called Eloise Finch. And she's wonderful. She has an Amazon agency based in Suffolk Way. And we talk all things e-commerce. And so we're looking at scaling e-commerce businesses. We're looking at challenges within the world of e-com. I've just posted an article today actually about making sure you've got the right team for your e-commerce play when you come out of lockdown. So it's about right heads and right seats and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I love it. And actually by doing it, you remind yourself of A, just how much you know. B, it, it provides great content for prospects as well as existing clients. And also it allows you to give yourself a platform for other people to find you and see that you can go on their show. Mm -hmm. So like we're, we're chatting here. Um, I was talking to a, a college this morning. I do quite a lot of talks in colleges and schools and I really enjoy that. Um, but I've read a five or six talks in the last couple of weeks and I love it. I absolutely love it. Actually, someone might find it useful. It's um, really humbling. No, absolutely. I'm with you on that. Um, uh, that's the main reason I started this is because I needed to really get practicing to just talk, you know, and, and yeah. get rid of all the nerves and being all like that. Um, and I, I do think there's, um, I'll try to watch them back and sort of critique myself a bit. And um, it's funny what's happened since episode one to now. Firstly, the yeah, background yeah. has taken on a bit more like, <laughs> greenery. <laughs> well, greenery and the picture finally arrived by Amazon. Um, and, and just things like, um, well, it would look quite funny, but this laptop's balanced on three monopolies. 
um, <laughs> move it higher up and there's a lamp in the corner it makes all the difference incredible um yeah so we um got to the last stage of our little catch-up um which is a, a random question out of my jar of questions okay. which um i have I, the, the questions i wrote them about two years ago before an event um they were definitely random, but <laughs> we're out of questions. Run out of questions. Um, I did write some new ones, but my printer's packed in, so I'm reverting to the old iPhone, which also can produce questions. Oh, oh, oh here we go. <laughs> so that is such a cool random. concept. Right? That's amazing. The jar of questions. I love that. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, oh, you're gonna love this, and I know you'll be all over this question. So, do you have an app um, on your phone that you use even though you hate it? Yeah. <laughs> so, I use a calorie counter, which I hate. I use an exercise tracker, which I hate. I use... Um, interesting, when I wake up in the morning, I have a very set ritual, which is check the bank, check Facebook, check Instagram, check Sky Sports, check Gmail. And that's before I've even talked to any other half or done anything else or brush my teeth or anything. I just always do that without fail. And so those apps, are, those apps I become, I guess I begin to hate because I'm like, oh, I've just become almost addicted to them. But definitely the calorie counter one is certainly not working very well at the moment. I mean, I hate it so much, I'm not even using it anymore. Um, I, I use one to track sleep, which I really like. Apart from it tells you when you're snoring, which I really don't like. Um, any others I don't like. And you know what, Twitter for me at the moment, I really dislike Twitter. I've got a real beef against it. I don't know why. I just can't can't get on with it. I find the content just not as enjoyable as a LinkedIn or a Facebook. I just can't fall in love with it. Yeah, I'm with you on Twitter. I never got Twitter. You know some people really yeah. it and then no, I just I, I have Twitter and I sort of tweet stuff, but I don't think I'm doing it right. It's yeah. just I just can't find a return on investment on it. I just it baffles me and I always get people saying, oh, you should market on Twitter and oh, you should promote your stuff. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should, but I just find it really, I don't know. I don't know if it's a user interface or what. I just don't enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. No, it's really interesting. I think it's, um, it's really nice to see that you also have a lot of sort of self-development apps on your phone. Same as me. <laughs> uh, it's so important. Do you do any meditating? Uh, yes, uh, Headspace. Nice. Yeah, I've got Headspace. I'm, I'm trying to do these guided meditations and, and they're tough. You need to be in the right Headspace. Well, ironically, the right Headspace to be able to use Headspace, right? Because sometimes I'm just thinking about something and I need to send this email or whatever and I just can't relax. But if I am, then glorious. Yeah, I started, my meditation journey was, um, so when I got diagnosed. Um, yeah. How long ago was that? um 31st of december 2018 so okay yeah quite a while ago <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So just over a year ago well yeah something like that uh, so not yeah. that long ago. a year and a half ago yeah a year and a half um yeah. but yeah i i realized that what i would need the most was patience and i'm an yeah. incredible impatient person and when they told <sighs> whole rehab program i thought oh my god i'm just gonna go nutty so i started going to the um buddhist center i hear really good things about that place yeah it, it's a real great access to meditation if you have never done it before and i think it helped me set a foundation that means i can now use headspace quite easily independently um but yeah it's a really lovely place and, and they're also nice people in there as well <laughs> Do you meditate daily or how does it work? I do now. So um, I neglected it for a bit, then got diagnosed okay. with post-traumatic stress disorder and then realised yeah. I have to start meditating again. Yeah, that's the trigger. And I guess the PTSD came off the back of the cancer treatment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the cancer yeah. treatment plus lots of other trauma that I had. Various other episodes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't aware, aware about, but... Um, but yeah, no, so at, at the moment, I'm actually having a really strict um, daily routine. Um, and it starts with uh, 35 minutes exercise every day, meditating on top of that. Um, 
reading 10 pages of a book every day just for self -defense. Nice. That's so weird. I also try and do 10 pages a day. Yeah. yeah 10 pages works well for me because I've noticed if I go for longer than that, my concentration just sort of... I just get bored. Yeah. And the other really important thing for me is um, every Sunday I plan all my food ahead. Oh, wow. Okay. For the week? For the whole week. Um, yeah. So that means we only buy what we need. And it also means all my nutritional values are sort of in a good range. Oh, great shout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and um, it doesn't require brain power during the week. I'm, I don't have yeah. to make decisions. I don't have to go, well, what I'm going to eat today. I make a good decision when I'm having a bad day. So it yeah. doesn't fall out. So, yeah, that's, that's given me a lot of ability to still be able to actually progress, even though I might be going through a rough time. There's a lot to be said actually around structure during COVID because I guess the second that we got hit as a country by the global pandemic, everyone's diaries went out the window, right? And uh, all of a sudden everyone's was like, oh, the new normal. It's only the new normal because you stopped using your normal diary because you've decided that you need to do some new weird way of living. Like you can still meditate, you can still order meals, you can still do everything that you wanted to do. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of given me that consistency. I'm a big one into daily structure, arguably too much in terms of everything's 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes minutes breakfast at this time i even put sleep in my diary everything's in the diary i've always had got people kick off when i'm uh yeah seeing them or whatever like oh why do i have to go on your diary like friends and girlfriends or whatever it's like well because if you don't you we won't happen yeah it has to, the diary rules life <laughs> yeah I've, I, i'm a i'm a list person i've always over planned my life but i i've been having having to try and learn to let go a little bit and have yeah, a yeah, yeah. reality <laughs> interesting when i just after christmas i tried to do a like three or four things a day in the list that i wanted to achieve and i'd like to start doing a gratitude journal as the next thing just to say three or four things i'm really grateful for in the day but i've been doing this three or four things i like to achieve and little things like mop the floor buy some new pillows go and do this go and do that buy some shorts whatever but oh it feels so good when you get it done you're like yes i've completed the day yeah funny you say that so i started a gratitude diary in mid-may okay Part of my routine yeah yeah um, and it's just three points and um it's definitely had a positive impact but also i didn't realize how much i had to be grateful for which is yeah, thing to say. It. when you start journaling it you just go oh well actually yeah there's that and there's that and there's that yeah. no and actually that happened and that happened and that wouldn't happen without that person or that thing and yeah actually yeah. life turns out to be all right I did one specific one where I thanked um, like any, everyone who was involved in my recovery or in... Yeah. And I suddenly realised it was a list of over 25 people. Oh, sorry. I think I cut out there, didn't I? I heard there was a list of 25 odd and then I, that's as far as I got. Yeah. Um, it's just starting to thunder and lightning here. So I think I'm having a bit of interference. Oh. <laughs> So basically, there was over 25 people who were involved uh, from diagnosis to now to, to get me where Amazing. I am. Yeah, for all I know. That's so cool. That's so cool. I, just, um, I, I think that while it's amazing that you give other people spotlight on this show, I think it's really important that you maybe don't get the recognition you deserve for the amazing stuff you've done for the entrepreneurial community in Norwich and also with your diaries and the, the awareness you're giving to cancer, like everyone is either directly or indirectly affected by it. And it's been amazing the way you've talked about it so openly and honestly. So I really thank you for that. I think that's really important. Oh, Nathan, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it together. Hold it together. You can cry on them off air. <laughs> oh, on that beautiful note, um, it seems perfectly apt. Oh, thank you so much for your time, Nathan. And I hope, no I hope that in the not distant future we'll have you at one of our events with cocktail in hand and a oh, that sounds perfect <laughs> <laughs> that sounds perfect look after yourself take care and if there's anything i can do please just reach out thank you so much you take care you too. take care bye-bye